going over today my scratch build of the Star Wars Super Star Destroyer. I basically just uh, used this Micro Machine Super Star Destroyer as a visual reference as to what it needs to look like. It's not 100% accurate, but I think it's a good representation of the Super Star Destroyer. The finished ship came up to just a fraction over 6 inches long. And I'll talk a little bit more about the paint later. Um, first, I'm going to go into some uh, things I use to make it. Obviously, tools are important. Uh, an etching knife, a sharp exacto knife. Uh, I have a, a variety of different type of files, uh, different type of sanding strips from uh, fine to really coarse, and, and kind of all in between. <clears throat> Tweezers for the little tiny little parts that they were involved, some snips. Uh, the actual styrene that the ship was used for, let me just over and take a quick look at some of the products. Um, I had two sheets, one was uh, 1.5 millimeter or 0 0.06 inches thick, uh, which is uh, a fairly thick and rigid uh, styrene you can see. This is the center of the ship, I'm going to move this back out and take it back to the ship. Uh, I use the thicker for just a uh, straight, and I'll post pictures as I'm talking of uh, how I achieved that, but the very center of it is the very thick styrene. Uh, for the upper and lower sections, I used um, 0.03 inch styrene sheet, which is uh, half as thick and a lot more flexible. And the reason I did that is uh, I knew I was going to have to, <coughs> excuse me, have to bend uh, the sheet. I didn't want to have different sections. I wanted to keep it all one piece and bend it in and to give it that angled look on both the lower and topper, uh, uh, lower and bottom part. So uh, that's the some of the materials. I also used some uh, strip styrene uh, to help build up the uh, intersection. And all I did on that is, uh, as you can tell, uh, I, I did rows of it and I uh, just heavily scored it using files, exacto knives, sanding paper, whatever, just to score up the sections and started from the middle, found the midpoint of the, that's where, one point where I did measure is trying to find the middle point. And uh, add it in, and then I go in with a thinner um, strip styrene in between, and then add in another section so there was some separation between to kind of give it that massive, you know, city-like look to it. And so that's how I use that. Also had some uh, uh, tube styrene, and that was used for the engines. Uh, except for those two, was, that was not the tube styrene, but there's three here, three here, and three here. That was all the tube styrene. And uh, some smaller square styrene and some other little bits and pieces to uh, just kind of add in a little detail, uh, detail here and there. Um, so here, I'm going to stop and kind of take you back and show you where I was in the middle of the build. Alright, so here I'm working on the bottom of the ship. When I started the project, I had a pretty good idea of how I was going to do the top of the ship uh, as far as making the sections and building it up using the strip star ring. And I moved on to the bottom, I'm realizing that it's uh, actually much different than the top of the ship. As you see, there's a concave section up in the front of the ship and also in the back of the ship. So I'm going to have to uh, make an area that's concave. How I'm addressing that is I'm using the strip star ring. I first cut out this shape. This will be the outer hull of the ship, the bottom of the ship, and I took this strip styrene and using uh, the etching device and some files and uh, whatnot, I scored up the, uh, the uh, strip here to give it some detail and then I'm attaching it and then I'll put another layer, I'll score this and etch it up and put more detail on it and then I'll, I'll attach it down here and then that'll give us some depth you know, to the bottom to kind of mimic that concave area and again we'll score it up, etch it out, put some more detail and that will be the bottom front uh, of the ship. Alright, so here I am again with the uh, finished product. Uh, one area, you know, if I, uh, which I do plan on kind of coming back and redoing this project in a bigger scale, maybe in the lights down the road. Uh, one area where I added in the concave and strips, it's created a little bit of a uh, too much. I didn't thin it out enough. It looked like I had it when I was gluing it together, but once I glued it together and pressed both sides down, realized I didn't thin this out inside enough. So it's a little bit of a um, different gap along the side. So that's probably my biggest mistake of this project. Um, a little bit about the paint. Uh, this was just a mixture of like a, a dark blue, uh, gray, 
I think I had some gunmetal mixed in. I wanted a kind of a bluish tint to it, but not um, too blue. And this is, uh, I believe, this is gunmetal um, airbrush paint that I used on here to get the different colors. And the same here, I just masked it off and did the gunmetal on the inner parts with the uh, blue mixture of paint on the hull. Uh, if you notice, the hull is uh, kind of rough looking. That was uh, on purpose. I took the really coarse sanding paper and ran it over it. I wanted it to have some kind of texture to it. And I did add some just little tiny little pieces of uh, cut styrene to uh, add the little bits here and there and the little detail that you see without. So there you go. It is uh, not typically, uh, not very hard. Um, the bottom was more challenging than the top. Uh, it was super glued for the most part. I did use uh, just regular modeling testers, modeling glue for some of the smaller things that I needed a little bit more time for it to set. Um, that's one thing about super glue is, uh, especially these little pieces, once you put them down, it wants to latch on and it's hard to move them around. So for that, I used just the regular modeling glue. So that's the uh, Superstar Destroyer, Scratch Belt Superstar Destroyer. Uh, basic tools, and you can get it done too. And have a good one.